I am recording this so that I will not be a jerk face. All my instincts tell me basically to just put this thing together and be done. But there's a lot of other people out there who are just like myself who are trying to install this keyless entry, easy guard, PKE, oh, cosmic shell. And you had to basically search the four corners of the world to find any information at all. So, um... I finally decided that I was going to install this thing after buying two totally separate models. The original one I had bought, excuse my mess, it's kind of a disaster area, was this one. I think this was like the EC200 or whatever one that one is. Uh, this one was not the right one. Uh, they actually make one specifically for Tundra or specifically to be used with Tundra. And that turned out to be this one right here same box but uh this one right here is the uh which one is it the ec 002 pp this is for toyota tundra this is made by the same company but so this one is plug and play so this one's going to go in the canvas and it sounds like i'm saying cannabis but it's going to go inside the canvas right so uh I've done a whole lot of random things to this Tundra over the, over the short time I've had it. But of course I installed that lovely 10 inch uh, radio. Got that one on eBay for like a buck 80. Don't put those other ones in there. This one actually looks very flush and very nice, but you don't really care about that. You're here to find out how to put together this thing. So since I didn't put anything together yet, my main goal was just to uh, test it, to verify they will actually work before I seal everything back up only to find out that it doesn't work. I've done that before. Uh, but this one right here is it's not as bad as the BMW I did because they had fiber optic cables. And if you mess one up, then you destroy the whole entire harness and there's no hope of putting back together or anything because you're pretty much screwed. This one is a lot more forgiving. So it doesn't really require much. Don't let this bird's nest freak you out. Okay, it freaked me out. I was totally freaking. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. Oh, man. Well, I, I actually I already knew I could do it, but. I didn't want to do the more complicated one, which had you cutting like a thousand wires. So if you had that one and you haven't installed it yet, the original EC002, send it back. Don't even unbox it. Just send it back and order the the PP one. So all the Toyota people have been very great in giving people information and details that they need to know so that they'll actually be able to put this thing together. And if you're watching this going, I want to install Keyless Century on here. I mean, or a PKE on here, so I don't have to have the key in my pocket and use the key in the ignition and all this other stuff. This is the video that you're going to want to see because all the other ones are just people showing you that it works without actually showing you how to get it to work and piss me off. I watched like 80 million videos, went to 90 different forums, and information all over the place. So in a nutshell, these are the cool remotes that it comes with. It allows you to match it with different ones. This is the one from the other set that I have over there, but this is the one that comes with it. Uh, it comes with little covers that go over it, which are actually really good. Uh, that's these covers. They're going to go right over the top, and you can put the key in and like screw it down. But in a nutshell, this is, the, this is going to be the real information you guys want to know. Okay, how this thing works. These are the instructions they're going to give you with it. Pretty simple instructions if you're a rocket scientist. Okay, so <laughs> this stuff is a mess. They show you where all the connectors go. That's if you uh, have to switch the wiring around. But since this one is already made for the Tundra canvas, you won't have to go through most of this. You still need this. You're going to need this. Don't throw it away. You're going to need this. But uh, I actually ended up uh, using a YouTuber who actually, uh, well, it wasn't a YouTuber. It was a person in one of the forums, and he put out a uh, in. Uh, a walkthrough for a sequoia that he had uh but some of the stuff doesn't match up like he has certain things for the uh this is for a 2011 uh sequoia but i printed it off because i needed it in color so i don't want to have to do it on my phone because it's impossible uh basically he gave the walkthrough of how to install everything from where the the ground cable is and everything else like that of how to take it apart. But if you have made it to this point, you pretty much already know, but there's, there's a lot of things you don't have to do like this. You don't need to do this. Uh, Easy guard. They actually sell their own, um, a little bypass for it. 
and basically uh, you install it right here. If the key won't fit, then basically you can just cut this little rubber around here and you can take the chip out and just sit the chip in there. But right now I just wanted to test it. And then you can actually go get copies of this key made at low at Home Depot because they were gonna copy it before they put the gap to grab the key and everything. They put it in the machine. They're like, oh, it's a G key. Sorry about that. And then they took it out and I'm like, so all I have to do is take out this chip. Yeah, basically. So that's all you have to do. So uh, this one doesn't require you to plug it in. They have an older model, which uh, you have to plug into uh, a power source, which is a constant 12. But this is the new one that they made. Uh, and this one, you don't have to put uh, any power on. All you do is sit it in there or sit the chip in there and then you're good to go. And then you run that around the key ring, which you get to leave in here and still use the key to start your vehicle. Because right now everything's connected. Oh, well, I disconnected the battery, of course. So if you're going to work on a vehicle, <laughs> disconnect the battery, uh, at least just a black cable, just go in and disconnect it. But this key works. I can use this if in an emergency situation, but I'm going to install my push button start right here. I want it right here, not right here. Some people install it right here. I think it's dumb. I'm putting it right here and I can use my real key if I need to. So this one right here, only $13 on Amazon. Uh, I'm going to try to put a link in the description for that because this is for everybody who's asking how to do this. Because I asked every form, I looked at every form, and all you got was information all over the place or just people bragging that they actually have it installed by an installer. If you're going to do it yourself, you don't need a voltmeter. I just had this because I couldn't figure anything out. I couldn't figure certain things out. Then by the time I figured it out, I'm like, I should share this with everybody so that everyone knows how to do it. I'm not going to show you how to take apart this section. Everyone already knows by now to undo the screws on each side and then you'll get access to the, to the lovely, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The doggone thing for the, for the uh, steering column, basically. So, this uh, already made unit doesn't require you to cut any wires. You have to cut not one wire. That's what makes it so good. This is remember, this is just a test. I'm gonna actually loop that around there properly, but I just wanted to do the test. So it, it comes with the canvas system, so it's gonna run everything for you. And so that goes down here to this unit, and then this unit only has to be connected to the ground. And they're right there. Once you connect it to the ground, you are good to go. For the, for the most part and the whole entire canvas system uh that's an additional one that comes with it so you can use it normally but the real one is actually right there that's the original canvas so basically to remove this you're going to remove <clears throat> it's going to be a little tab on the inside of this and you just push it in and then you can remove this one and then these will come out and you'll just put tape around these edges to keep them together and then you'll take this one and you'll put it back inside that little notch right here. So then it'll function normally and then it'll be out of the way. The, the, there's only four cables you have to connect in this one. So the first one is going to be, of course, the parking cable. It's going to be, well, let me see. No, no, no uh, this one is the lock. Ah, come on, focus. They're labeled, so it's going to say lock and unlock. They both sit in this little, um, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember no names right now. I've been working on this thing for a day and a half trying to figure it all out. Come on out. Come on out. <sighs> Hold on, I'm going to pause it while I take this thing off. Actually, I'm not. We all need to see the suck. Okay, so... Right here, this is where it goes. So you have that right here, you're gonna have this one, and then just count up three. It's gonna be this one right here. So I use uh, T taps, or yeah, T taps, and basically you're gonna go into this red one. That one looks like that one's gonna be for the unlock. Red for unlock. Come on, never wants to focus. Red for unlock. It's gonna be right here. You're gonna use a T tab, you get them from Walmart, they're only $8. Eight dollars. You go to Walmart in the electrical aisle or in the uh, auto aisle. It's going to be in the automotive aisle, and it's going to be the T taps. You got to use the red ones. You cannot use blue. The gauge is too small. So I know I learned it the hard way, which is why I said. Uh, of course, I dropped the phone. Hold the phone. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm kind of doing this on the fly because I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to put it together and drill the holes and have it be all perfect. But I was like, man, if other people didn't put stuff in forums, I'd be up a creek without a paddle right now. So I'm going to pay it forward for everyone else. Uh, the next one you have right here is going to be the one right next to it. You're going to have the red one here. That's going to be for unlock. The lock one is the one right next to it. Right. Come on, focus. Come on. There we go. The one right next to it. That one is going to be connected to the unlock. Come on, focus. Making bad quality here. So, those two. That's all you're going to need. Again, i got to do a disclaimer. If you blow up your car, then it's not my fault. Sorry about that, but uh, this is the process. What's the next cable? The next one you're going to have here is going to be the brake cable. The foot is going to say foot brake on it. And that one's going to go in... Right underneath here is going to be a rubber thing that's covering it to protect it. But you got to fold it back. And then it's going to be the tan one in the back. This one right there. And that's the one you're going to clamp the foot brake into. So it's going to be in a number one slot from what I remember. So that's the number one slot. So it's the very top one right up here. Let me see. So it just go straight up. The very first slot right here, so it should be no, slot number one, but it's going to be tan. It's going to be the only thick-looking cable of them all. The other gauges are, sm are much smaller. And then after that, the last one is going to be the horn. The horn connects underneath the dash because you have to remove this piece it just peels apart and you need to undo the two uh screws right there but there's a million videos on how to take this thing off and uh it's gonna be it's going to be this one right here it should be a uh purple cable and it's gonna be in this i'm not taking that one out this one was a pain in the butt but this is probably the worst one of them all but it's going to be the bottom one. I'm going to see if I can attach a picture in here for you guys uh, from other forms. That one at the bottom right there. Or at the bottom of my dirty fingernails, that one right there. Last slot, not the one above it, that one. And that's the one you're going to tap into. That purple cable is going to be connected. And then that's literally it. That's it. I know, I know you were you were expecting more, but 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 there is no more. Uh, some notable mentions of some things that you're gonna have to do. Okay, let me zoom it back out. Notable mentions of certain things that you have to do. Uh, one, when you plug it all in, the power isn't gonna come on. I mean, once you turn the power back on, nothing's gonna come on. You're gonna look crazy and be like, "What the heck is happening to my life?" Well. In order to get it to work for the very first time, you're going to have to put your key back in the ignition because none of your AC power is going to come on. Nothing. Everything's going to be just just off except for the door chime of the actual key being in, in, in the ignition. Once that happens, you uh, you turn it to the on position and then that's going to power up the easy guard system. Because right, And you have to connect all the cables, connect all the cables. Even if you just have them all sitting right here like they are right now with the, you know, um, the, the sensors and everything, you have to plug it all in because it's not going to work without it. Um, the first, um, they say it works without it, but it's not going to work without it. Okay, so plug it in as a test. Have everything over here all in one spot and look crazy. Let me flip this thing back. This is just a little rubber thing. So uh, once the power comes on, this is going to glow blue. Once it glows blue, it's going to make a little chirp sound. From that point, because I have the keypad and everything else here too, once you have it turned on, then it's going to connect to the system. But it still won't work. You won't be able to start the vehicle until, until you program the key first. That's what got me off. Even the instructions, which are only one sheet of paper, don't tell you that. They just tell you to, you know, turn it on. 
like 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 you're supposed to know. So the only way to get the 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 PK system to work is to grab. I ended up using a, a basketball pin, uh, air pin, but uh, this comes apart and it's not going to come with batteries. So take the one out of the tundra that you already have, which I actually did, and just put it inside of this little chip case. These all they basically come halfway apart, but you take that out, you put the battery inside of it, and then you bring it over here. And the back of it is going to be a little hole. You have to stick this one inside of it. Preferably, if you've got two batteries, you can put them in both of the remotes. I prefer you do that method over this. So if you have two remotes, that one and another one, take the batteries out, put the batteries in this one. And in the, uh, in the replacement one that you're going to be using, which is going to be this. Once you have both batteries, I mean, I mean, both key fobs sitting right here, you're going to stick this inside of this hole and it's going to beep. When it beeps, letting you know that it's going into pairing mode, you hold down any button for uh, until you hear this thing make one beep. It's going to go beep. That means it already memorized it. And then you press like lock again. Then you grab the second one. Within like a, the five to ten seconds you're going to have to do it. And you do the exact same thing. And then it's going to beep twice. So it's going to pair both remotes. Outside of that, one's going to be paired and the other one's not going to be paired. And it's going to drive you nuts. That's what's going to happen. And they're going to tell you that you're supposed to hold this pin inside of it while you're doing both of them. It's a magic trick. So you got to hold this one while grabbing your other hand and still having this inside of it. Press the lock button and hold it. For like one second, you're going to hear one beep, and then you're going to press unlock again. And then you're going to grab the second one, and you're going to press unlock, and it's going to make two beeps. Beep, beep. And then that's when you press unlock again. It's going to memorize both of them. Then you can remove this pen. And you take this pen out, you're only going to get one synced up, and it's going to drive you up the wall. Outside of that, that is the only things that you have to do to get this thing to work. Now, you're probably thinking like, oh, well, we want to see it work. Okay. Here's the key fob. To close the door. And then I'm going to put back on. I don't want to touch that. I'll shock myself or something. Uh, well, I don't want to get covered in goo. You know, plug back in the battery. I didn't tighten it down. I want to be able to take it off immediately if something's going haywire. And then from there, the system's going to power up. Now it's all on. Everything should be on. Okay. I don't know why I had the horn hooked up and not the little chirpy thing. But so you walk, you can press lock. Uh, I mean, unlock. Because it's already unlocked, so it's not going to blow the horn. Then you're gonna press unlock. So that replaced that dee dee. I'm like, I still gotta find a wire that does just that. Um, then you walk away from it. And it locks itself. I'm walking towards it, holding a camera. Now it unlocks itself. Now it does that little click 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 sometimes because it's like it's trying to double unlock it maybe i have it set up to unlock all the doors but as long as you have this in here that's the glow right there from there you're gonna put your foot on the brake and then do the whole entire start motion but without it you can just uh press i'm in the garage right now with it closed so i'm not gonna fire it up but from right here you can press Uh, I installed Car Carwell Goo Guru on this one, so it works pretty well, and you get to do a whole bunch of crazy things with it. Then you can turn it on, press it again. Accessory on. And then you press this and hold it, and it's going to start it. From there, I'm good to go. Shutting everything else down. It is the done. That is the process. This is, that is this 20-minute video 
that you're going to watch is going to show you how to do this. And then I get to clean it and put lice all over this whole entire car. I mean, I literally had to do, I had to lose my mind for this. That's the only information you guys needed. You plug in the canvas. I mean, you just connect a little things. I'm losing my mind, but whatever. I might post it up in the video. Then you plug it into the canvas. You uh, and after you verify everything works, you disconnect the original canvas. It's going to be down there. You're going to pop that out, and you're going to pop this one in, and you're going to tape that one and put it away. Then you're going to take all of this, and you're going to put it inside. You do the little four cables that go in here, and that's it. You are done. Well, you're not done. <laughs> you outside of that, you have to use a little tool and pop out this. I've done it before to install this. And then you get to drill it right where you want it to go. Then you'll have a fully functional key that you don't have to remove. You don't have to remove it or take anything off. You just wrap this little cable around this column and tape it. And then you could have a key hole accessible if all else should fail. And since the mobilizer bypass is going to be hidden in here, you can put any of your regular keys that you have for the Tundra inside of it and use that one in the worst case scenario situation. And you get to have a push button right here. If you want to, you can have a little little caps that you can put inside of this uh, keyhole that'll cap it off and make it look even more pretty. But that's it, that's the process. That's the mystery that I had to figure out for <laughs> for hours and looking at multiple forms so if you want to do it you can certainly achieve it and then you will have a vehicle that you get to walk away from and walk towards uh i put i'm putting my sensors right here uh i already started to kind of like just test the distance that i want to have it um there's actually disconnected so i'm gonna run it in here ah sorry Emma. sorry my whole entire thumb hit it but anywho uh then you'll be able to run um, the other one on the opposite side doing the exact same thing. That cable is going to be much longer. But if I walk away from it, come on. Usually, now I locked it up. Walk near it. Now it's unlocked. That one I just kind of draped over here real quick just to kind of get a good sense of, I don't know where I put that in. Oh, yeah, I actually just tucked it under here real quick because I was preparing for where I'm going to put it, measuring the distance. So that one's going to go right in here. And then you run that one and you kind of run it to the other side. So that's why I was going to have this open and just kind of toss it into the other side so it'll be all nice and neat and tucked away. But in a nutshell, this is, this is it. So if you want to get it, it's about 180 bucks. Uh, if you want to get this one too, it's also another 180 bucks. I think that that one's worth it because it has so many different functions and different things you can go to. If you, on the thing, is going to have something that looks like a car riding on a road, but I didn't want that one. So I changed the UI to Car Web Guru, which is on the Google Play Store. And then you get to pick from much cooler things. Touchscreen plays movies. Uh, you also get a USB connection. Uh, it also comes with all the cables you need to run a TV back here, which I'm also going to run through little munchkins. And um, from there, uh, it has Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi. If you want to, you can have Netflix, Hulu, everything on there. And if you want to put your phone in tether mode, you can watch other online streaming movies. But you can use a, a USB stick and that'll give you TV in there. But the thing that was whooping my butt, because my wife's car has keyless entry with a, with a push button and mine's doesn't. Having that key in my pocket, stabbing me in the, in the dog on holes in my pockets, driving me up the wall. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, this also has a little uh, thing right here that disconnects this little lock. And you get to take your other key, cut it, stick it in there, and then you get to screw it in here. Because it's going to be, uh, when you take this piece off, it's a screw that you screw into the the cut key that you have. You can use uh, uh, any kind of like saw you have to kind of cut that off. Uh, you know, fine tooth uh, saw you can use to cut that off. And from there, you're pretty much good to go. That is the end of this lovely video. I hope it helped everyone because if I had known all of this stuff without having to search the four corners of the earth to try and figure it out, I also replace that thing too because that thing was flopping all over the place. So I just got that one for seven bucks on eBay. 
But in a nutshell, that is it. That is the the, the chaos. I, I'm not going to, all you need is some small basic tools that you probably already have in your house. Anything else you can get from Walmart. You don't have to remove steering columns and all this other stuff. You can still have a functional key. Uh, I'm going to flip through this because, what's the name of the thing? The ignition harness. Ah, that was it. It was driving me nuts. And of course, in his little walkthrough, since I'm going to put these on here, you guys can kind of pause it and see what he did in the Sequoia. But the irritating part about the Sequoia is not, it's not the same. He was doing crazy things like attaching fuses and making his own pin harnesses and all of this lovely stuff where everything doesn't 100% match up. Uh, I only needed four cables. Instead of having to do a bundle of cables like what comes in the other one over there, all I had was four cables I needed to connect and it was it's pretty simple. Let me make sure y'all have access to all this so y'all don't have to be all over the internet trying to figure out all of this. I could screenshot it, but I just don't have energy for that. And that's what he did to all that stuff. Attaching all these sensors and all this other stuff. I mean, in, in the back, uh, you can put the keypad up there, which is where I'm going to put mine. So even with the keypad, you don't even have to have a key. You can leave, leave, lose your keys in a theme park, and then you can walk right over to your vehicle, unlock it, turn it on, and drive home if you needed to. And you'll grab another key or order more keys because I actually have like multiple versions of the keys. Uh, he put it right there. I didn't want mine there because I, I think it's dumb. I want to be able to push it, not curl my arm and then hook it. But that in a nutshell is the wiring diagram. This is the, the book that they give you, but I just reprinted it again because it comes with a book. But in a nutshell, that's it. The dip switch is already set. Three is going to be the only one for the Tundra, and that's it. But you don't have a bird's nest of wires that you need it. That's why I, I got rid. I I let, kept the other one, but I was like, I'm gonna get the one that's made for this one because the other wiring requires you to remove spades and all this other stuff and put them in a certain order. It's too much of a mess for everyone to deal with. This is all you basically need. 170. If you got the other one, send it back before your, your thing expires, and you're good to go. That is the tutorial of how easy it is to do this. I hope I've been a help for you guys because it has driven me crazy for the last couple of days figuring this thing out. So if you like this video, share it in the forums, tell people where it is. Uh, I'm not trying to like do something crazy on YouTube. I just want everyone to know how simple this process is, especially if you're a Tundra owner. Uh, yeah, that, that dirt is me. It's not because I have a dirty car. It's, it's because I literally <laughs> busted my butt to try and get all of this stuff done. And I was covered in dirt and sliding all over the place and yeah so that's it hopefully i've been a, a good help to you guys oh yeah you're gonna need one of these you're gonna need some kind of flashlight that stands up on its own something to be able to get light in these places right now i got a garage door open so it's bringing some light in here but if you want to do it in the nighttime when the munchkins go to sleep that's the best way to go about it again hopefully it helped everybody this is all you need pretty simple but still very complicated if you have no idea what you're doing and where all the wires are. Hopefully I showed you guys where they all are. You can pause it, zoom in, take a screenshot, use your phone to zoom in. That's what I did on certain videos to find all the locations. But that's it. <laughs> all right, everyone. Now I get to tear this thing apart, install the push button and put it all back together. Yay.